Welcome to Ask the TA, a periodic segment on HCAT where viewers can send questions for the town administrator and other town representatives to answer for the benefit of all Holliston stakeholders. This is our third episode and I'll introduce my guests after I read the question from an HCAT viewer. What will changes to the Traffic Advisory Committee, or TAC, mean for future proposed traffic changes in Holliston? To answer that question, I'm joined by Police Chief Matthew Stone and Select Board Member Tina Hine. Tina and the Chief will review the creation of TAC in 2019 and the important work done to date, and the next phase of TAC that is coming with a recently approved reorganization of the group. Thank you, Tina and Chief, for being with me. We will get into uh, the question first, as I, I read uh, originally, which is what are the changes, what, what impact will the changes coming to TAC have for uh, future proposed change, uh, changes in Holliston for traffic? Um, and you know, I think before that, we have to get into sort of where TAC uh, originated from and, and where it's, it's been so far. So with that, if uh, Chief, you'd like to get into sort of how it worked before TAC was created. Great, thanks for having us today. Uh, so before, when we typically had a traffic complaint, it would come directly to the PD. So someone would call about a speeding complaint or a volume of cars. Uh, we would take the call and usually dispatch a cruiser down there for a uh, period of time. Uh, it was a quick fix. It was kind of a Band-Aid fix because we weren't really addressing the problems that were coming into us. Um, so rather than bring every traffic complaint directly to the PD, uh, we started talking about creating a traffic advisory committee to handle bigger problems on a bigger scale. And that's kind of how we... Um, got to where TAC is. Uh, we still encourage people to call if there's a safety issue for sure uh, or an issue that needs to be addressed right away um, to call the PD on the 1212 line. Uh, but if it's a longer term uh, problem or issue, uh, we'd like to see it go through TAC. Great. And then also, obviously, <clears throat> there's also the component of the select board who are the highway surveyors by bylaw. Uh, and so a lot of changes that, whether it was pre or post uh, the implementation of TAC, would go to the select board for changes to um, the traffic rules and orders. And we'll, we'll get into a little bit of that uh, as we go here. And then so, uh, Ms. Hine, if you could just mention uh, from your perspective, you know, as TAC came to be in 2019, um, sort of how that worked and, and since that, that came to be. Yeah, it was, it was um, a priority up upon joining the board. So I was elected in May 2019, and it was something that I felt would really benefit um, the community uh, to, to form a committee like this that could directly address citizen concerns. Uh, you know, in, in terms of the design and how do you create a committee like this, there's a steep learning curve for someone who's new to the select board, but the, the best and most important thing that I think Chief Stone and I collaboratively worked on was reaching out to other communities to find out how they were structured um, in surrounding communities that had successful traffic advisory committee um, uh, in existence. So the work took about three months, I'd say. We, um, by December, we were ready to go. And the creation of the committee was based, again, on the feedback that we got from other communities. So um, our first meeting, as you have on the screen there, was December 11th, 2019. So um, you know, we've been up and running about three years. And the charge uh, and, and sure. membership, which we can pull up in a second as well, so the charge uh, really came from that process as well. I've highlighted one section in here, including some policies that are on the website or reflected um, in, in other departmental goals, which we'll get to also. Um, but if you just want to go yeah. through the, the charge and how that came to be. Again, looking around at other communities that have that have successful traffic advisory committees and, and sort of how they set up their charge, um, identifying where Holliston was, was addressing traffic concerns and then where we maybe needed to have a committee like this do something that wasn't currently being done. And, and I think that's where you see things like Vision Zero coming in, where you see things like review of, of policies, where you see things like um, advocating for or recommending traffic studies in areas. Um, that was something that we included in the charge. Um, the membership, I'm sorry, I missed your prompt sure. there. The membership, um, we definitely wanted to have resident input. Um, that needs to be balanced with public safety. Uh, so DPW, fire, and police. Uh, some communities have an engineer who sits on uh, the committee. Other communities have a, a planning board member or more specifically the town planner involved. Holliston does not have an engineer. Um, we can talk about that later in terms of where does TAC go in the future. And our planning department didn't have the resources to provide someone, a staff member, for the committee. So what I think we had initially was a balance, um, heavily on the resident side, but certainly well represented by DPW Fire. 
and police. Um, we changed that, as you'll get to in, in a few minutes, but again, modeled after other communities and how they had successfully set up their traffic advisory committees. Great, and obviously, thank you very much as we uh, get into, you know, sort of the reorganization as we go here. Obviously, thank you to everybody who's participated from the beginning, uh, both chiefs, the DPW director. We had a variety of uh, residents at large, uh, you representing the select board, Stacey Rabry representing the school committee. And so we'll, we'll finish with um, sort of where we're going in the future. But obviously, thank you to this group um, for volunteering their time and getting us to where we are today. Um, and so I just wanted to also highlight before we get through some of the other specific things that TAC has taken on. Um, how TAC works with uh, goals and objectives of departments that, that obviously exist outside of TAC and have other roles to play, but um, certainly work together. So uh, I know the police department has is a lot of effort in their five-year strategic plan. If you'd like to just kind of update where, where that is and, and how that plays a role as well. Sure. So we've had a uh, strategic plan in place for the police department since 2012. Uh, we've run a five-year plan uh, for two consecutive uh, sessions, if you will. Uh, the first one expired in 2017, and our current one uh, is due to expire, or what expired at the end of June. So we're currently working on our third strategic plan, which is going to bring us through FY27. In each one of those strategic plans, traffic safety and traffic enforcement was, was deemed a priority uh, either through the community members or through members of the department. So it's been a continuing trend uh, since 2012, so more than, more than 10 years, um, traffic and traffic safety has been a priority of the police department and you know, members of the community. So we've done a number of things to address that at the police station, including uh, creation of a traffic safety officer, which we've found to be very helpful. Uh, in that. So it's been a long road and will continue to be right through uh, fiscal year 27. Great. Um, and so Vision Zero is within that. If you just want to kind of highlight what that means, um, I, I don't know that everybody's familiar with that term. Sure. So Vision Zero uh, is a multidisciplinary approach to looking at traffic. So rather than having traffic issues strictly go through the police department or through public safety, it looks at different things such as roadway design, speed, uh, technology, different policies that can be made from, say, the select board level. I um, mean, it works at a, like I said, a multi-jurisdictional approach as opposed to a, a siloed approach uh, through public safety. So the goal is to reduce or eliminate fatal crashes um, within a community, and I think Halston is in line with being supportive of Vision Zero, and I think uh, as part of that, it, you know, part of tax mission, I think we fit nicely and align nicely with uh, Vision Zero. Okay, and that would be uh, included in the, the previous strategic plan, and we'll be we'll discuss uh, as you bring to the community an updated five-year strategic plan. Yes, in the fall. Great, uh, and then additionally, obviously, outside of just uh, the police department, we have other. Uh, initiatives that also sort of interact with some of the things that TAC is working on, public works specifically. I've had Sean Reese on this show uh, for other reasons, but if uh, Ms. Hine, if you could kind of cover these two areas that um, you know we work on with uh, public works quite a bit. Uh, in Complete Streets and Safe Routes of Schools. Yeah, Complete Streets is a really important policy decision that was made by the select board, endorsed by the, and supported by the planning board as well, um, that puts a focus on multimodal transportation in every sort of planning decision that's made in the community, as well as policy decisions. Uh, so you're looking at any new, new development, any intersection change, any new roadway, um, any new uh, horizontal infrastructure change in the community that addresses roads, sidewalks, crosswalks, you're looking at it through this complete streets view, which again means um, all modes of transportation with a focus on the most vulnerable. So people who walk, people who bike, people with disability, people who are, are more likely to be injured if they were in a, in a uh, crash. So that's complete streets. It was a policy first, then we developed the plan um, for where, where the needs were in the community. That took feedback from residents into consideration, and now we have our plan in place and we're seeking funding. So complete streets has a funding component. Um, Safe Routes to School is very focused on K through 8 uh, education and providing access, K through 8 schools rather, and providing access to children who would choose to walk or bike to school and ensuring that there are safe routes. The benefit of Safe Routes to School is that it, it is um, an, a benefit to all members of the community. When you make a Safe Routes to School improvement, you're affecting everybody who lives in the community. So it has significant overlap. What I find most interesting is, is the overlap between all three Vision Zero, Complete Streets, Safe Routes to School. There's really not a project in Holliston uh, 
that we would identify as uh, change or improvement to any aspect of our roadway, sidewalk, crosswalk that doesn't cover all three of those. So there's a really nice cohesiveness. And then the last thing I would say is that all three of these come with funding opportunities. Yeah. Uh, and so we're, we're wise and smart to have a focus on um, both Vision Zero, Complete Streets, and Safe Routes to School because it positions us to seek state and federal funding. We have already and we will continue to moving forward. Right, and I, I would just highlight again, uh, for people who are unaware, uh, if they haven't been in a previous town meeting, uh, we did put in front of um, a previous town meeting an article to support our Complete Streets application, which uh, can provide up to $400,000 every three years through that Ma Mass DOT program. The Complete Streets policy that Ms. Hine mentioned is available online as well, um, and those go uh, a bit hand in hand. Safe Roots to Schools is one that uh, we have uh, we need to have multiple people involved in the conversation, including the schools, obviously, uh, and that we'll be looking for, you know, potential grant applications related to that coming soon. And, and so, sorry, go ahead. I was ahead. just going to add one comment, Travis. When Traffic Advisory Committee w meets to, to look at petitions, to hear petitions, to consider them, and, and other agenda items, that their focus is on things like Vision Zero, Complete Streets, Safe Routes at School. That sort of gives them, tethers them to the other policies and, and um, goals and objectives of, of town departments. So there's, again, that nice cohesiveness. Right. And so for a resident who might be interested in these things and might not be because they see one particular problem that they like to bring forward and they don't know where it fits in all of these different uh, dynamics, I think the answer on the bottom here in terms of submitting a traffic petition uh, is how you engage with TAC and then TAC would be responsible essentially for finding the fit within the organization. And so uh, if you were interested in, in submitting uh, a petition, uh, to change a traffic pattern or address a safety issue that you see. Uh, this is on the town's webpage. It's under boards and committees. The traffic advisory committee on the left in red is submit a traffic petition. There's a form to fill out that goes directly uh, to the group and uh, goes in for review. So with that, uh, I think we can get into sort of everything that's happened from 2019 to today in the middle of 2022, uh, which is the number of petitions that have been seen. Um, and if you'd like to kind of just go through uh, the significance of, of where those are. Uh, and I did have uh, Ms. Hine sort of going through the, uh, the higher level. I'm sorry, I had the chief doing that. Sure. Uh, so as Ms. Hines stated, we had our first meeting December of 19. It was the only in-person meeting we've had in three years. Uh, unfortunately, because of COVID, we had all of our meetings essentially uh, via Zoom. So to get the group together, uh, we were hoping to get together about three times or four times a year quarterly. Uh, we ended up meeting about nine or ten times, uh, you, on average about six, every six weeks or so uh, because of the number of petitions. So I think we did a tremendous job uh, with what we had uh, via Zoom and so forth. But since 2019, we've had just over 80 traffic petitions come in. Um, now that seems like a lot, but a lot of them were grouped together. So what we were able to do is continue looking on the list. We had several um, petition hearings where we had the petition to come in front of the uh, TAC. We heard their concerns. We took it under advisements. And what we did after that is we made a recommendation whether we thought it was one way or the other uh, to the select board to consider. And that's kind of how the process went. Uh, we've had, uh, like I said, a number of them fall into categories. So for example, uh, commercial motor vehicle enforcement. There were a number of South Street and Rockland Street and uh, you know adjoining areas that all fell into one group. So with one uh, you know visit from MassDOT and one study, we were able to address a lot of those concerns. Uh, similarly with uh, Woodland Street, Bullard Street, Lowland. So although we had 80, we were able to group those uh, together. Just recently, we looked at the list, and again, many of them fell under the two items that we just talked about: complete streets and safe routes to school. So it was a good way to kind of close out a petition or at least address a petition uh, by one of those programs. We currently have about 26 that still need to be addressed and looked at, and where our hope is that the new TAC can go through that list, um, kind of address them, see if they can group any, and I think with in-person meetings we should be able to get through that list a little bit quicker than we were able to during COVID. Great, and so obviously we'll, we'll close out here with the changes to TAC and how that might uh, get through that list or how that might impact somebody putting in a petition, um, but uh, that was a very good summary of where we are. One other thing that happened, and this was December of 2020, uh, town meeting, which got pushed back because of COVID also, as you guys were impacted in hearing your petitions. Uh, the the TAC, uh, so it was uh, obviously police, fire, DPW, and the group at, at large putting together what would be uh, equipment to support the efforts that TAC was, was seeing the need for in the community. And so there was some purchase of equipment, and, and if you could just go through that and how you've used it. Sure. So uh, 
right at the beginning of one of our uh, first meetings, uh, we decided that you know there was going to be some need for equipment to address a lot of the petitions that were coming in. A lot of them were speed issues, a lot of more volume issues, and we had no way to provide any type of data uh, or make any type of sound recommendation uh, based on that. So what we did in December of 2020 is we went to town meeting and we bought uh, several pieces of equipment. Uh, one was a messaging board with a speed trailer uh, that could collect data and itemize cars. Uh, we purchased a traffic counter which we could deploy in a particular neighborhood or street that could count volume, could count size of vehicles and so forth. Uh, another one was a large electronic message board. Um, part of the enforcement of traffic laws is education. So when traffic patterns are changing or new um, you know, areas of uh, there's a new design, having the ability to message that out to drivers and operators was important. So those were the three uh, major pieces that we uh, were able to purchase. And then we applied for a grant through um, the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security back right around when COVID started. Unfortunately, the, we were awarded the grant and the grant was taken back uh, because of funding and COVID and so forth. Uh, just recently, about six months ago, we were notified by EOPS that that funding opportunity was available again and we were granted our original request, um, which were electronic speed feedback signs. Uh, so we have several in town now. Uh, we just purchased four additional more that we can uh, deploy throughout the town. So uh, we have those and those are uh, ready to be put out there. Great. And then one other thing that, that came forward, and this didn't go through town meeting because of the process that we follow here in terms of Mass General Law, um, but uh, Chapter 9017C is something that obviously touched on quite a few tech uh, petitions that you saw and wrapped a few of those up. Um, and so if uh, obviously that was a tech recommendation to the select board which was implemented? Yeah, actually town meeting did weigh in on this. In 2019 before I was elected to the board, uh, there was a vote, an article to adopt 17C, okay. um, Mass General Law Chapter 90, Section 17C, which allows any community to adopt 25 miles an hour throughout the town where it's not otherwise posted. As, we won't get into statutory versus regulatory, but um, and many, many communities around us throughout the state have done so. So town meeting made the decision to adopt those laws. And then it came to the Traffic Advisory Committee to make recommendations on how to implement the, the adopted laws. And so that's what the Traffic Advisory Committee took up. Um, through a process that ended in December of 2019 with implementation um, on January 1st, 2020. I remember that people got the notice in their water bill, I think it was, or their right. tax bill, mm -hmm. to say that starting January 1st of 2020, speeds on roads that were not posted otherwise would drop to 25 miles an hour. Um, we haven't done the data collection, you know, to look to see how what impact that, that has had on either crash rates or enforcement or um, quality of life, but um, I think it was a significant step forward to addressing some universal concerns about speed in our community. Great. Um, I will get into the next one, but obviously uh, Chief or, or Ms. Hine can, can jump in as well. One other thing that came up and the, the Chief did mention it already, which is the heavy commercial vehicle exclusions. This was again, you know, a lot of these as you'll see, we, we interact with DOT in some instances, uh, the Department of Transportation at the state level. So the heavy commercial vehicle exclusion on Woodland Street was one that we put an application in um, because we had the data from uh, some initiatives that had happened through the planning board on Woodland Street. You have to apply for that based on a number of warrants that MassDOT sets forth. Um, and so we had the data, we applied for Woodland Street. Um, and then with that process, obviously a number of other TAC requests that came in uh, and known safety issues to the police department or, or issues that the public works have identified uh, led to a number of other streets including South Street, Bullard Street, Locust Street. And so we ended up having to, through that process, engage a traffic engineer to give us the, the data necessary to put in those applications. And through that process, we did apply to MassDOT for a number of heavy commercial vehicle exclusions, which essentially means that any vehicle uh, that weighs over two and a half tons cannot use that road. Um, there's, uh, there's different variations. Some are from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Uh, for uh, Woodland Street and South Street, for example, those are 24-7. Um, uh, heavy commercial vehicle exclusions, meaning that there is an alternate route. You have to prove to DOT that there is an alternate route for those trucks to take. That's all part of the application process and we were approved for those. And so those have been in place as well. Um, and I think that one thing as the, the select board discussed, as, as TAC reorganizes, which we'll talk about, um, that that might be something where, you know, the equipment that the chief went through that allows us to sort of data collect um, and, and double check uh, and review the, um, the progress that has been made through some of these initiatives 
that we could use that to see sort of now that the heavy commercial vehicle exclusions have been in place, uh, what has that changed in, in terms of uh, patterns that we see? Uh, is it being fully implemented? Are there changes that we need to be making to make sure that those are, are fully effective? Um, and so that was another thing I think it touched on, again, as the chief mentioned, a variety of different uh, TAC petitions. Um, but is there anything I missed with that, I think? I would just add that I, I, th I think that TAC was very much aware of the fact that the heavy commercial vehicle exclusion um, discussion was related to the petitions that we received. Um, but it was also related to the fact that these heavy commercial vehicle exclusions are in places like existing safe routes to school mm -hmm. um, roads, uh, on existing scenic roads, on entirely residential roads. So I, I, I think TAC worked in that, under that umbrella as well. There are other goals and objectives that are town-wide um, specific to certain departments. So in terms of like DPW and the, and the bridge down on Woodland Street, you know, it's concerning to have heavy, heavy commercial vehicles going over something that's been identified a, as a concern. So I, I, I think TAC worked under that umbrella of, of the big picture. What else are we accomplishing by um, recommending um, a heavy commercial vehicle exclusion. So protecting a scenic road, that's, that's significant for a town like Hollis, and we value that. And TAC was aware of that when they made the recommendation. Great. Anything else, Chief? Thank you. That's it. All right. Um, and then the most recent one, obviously, this list is, is a bit in chronological order of how we've progressed over the last uh, two and a half years here. Highland Street has come up most recently uh, through what TAC has heard. That did lead to an engagement of uh, traffic engineering. I think engineering will be how we sort of finalize this discussion of, of how we look forward. Um, but it followed a similar process to the heavy commercial vehicle exclusion where uh, traffic engineering study was required. Um, and with that, uh, the McMahon study, uh, which I can pull up here just to, for people to see is online, if you'd like to kind of just explain uh, where that started and, and what came out of that. I, I think. Th I, uh the Traffic Advisory Committee works best when we when there's good data for them to work with. And so a traffic study like what was prepared and presented by McMahon gives a really solid footing for making a very good recommendation. And, and that's what this um, traffic study provided, uh, great data and then the engineering recommendations for the Traffic Advisory Committee to, to weigh up against what the petitioner's concerns were. were. And, and that's how I viewed the process going forward. We have great information. We have strong engineering solutions brought by a third party objective um, party, bringing them to the Traffic Advisory Committee who could then hold them up against the petitioner's concerns. And, and that was what traffic, the Traffic Advisory Committee did and returned that back to the Select Board for consideration. And the Select Board can make then make a final decision from a place of a very strong, um, a very strong foundation. Like we've got good engineering data, strong engineering recommendations. We've got it reviewed by this nine-member committee. They are checking boxes in terms of does this address a, a petition concerns? Yes, it does. And now this tr the select board is left with the ultimate decision, and that's a good place to be making decisions from with that engineering back backup. Great. And so that report, as I mentioned, is online. Um, TAC uh, reviewed this and then made recommendations to the select board, which have been uh, accepted. And uh, so at this point, uh, public safety and public works are looking at implementing those changes. So if you want to just update the community on where we are with that. Sure. So uh, just as recently as last Friday, uh, before the long weekend, uh, myself, uh, Travis, uh, my traffic safety officer, members of McMahon, uh, we walked the Highland Street, Prentice Street, Hollis Street intersection, uh, talked about placage of signs and, and roadway design and so forth. So, you know, in the coming weeks, we're hoping to take action on this uh, rather quickly with uh, the recommendation being adopted by the select board. And uh, do you want me to go specifically into uh, the design or? No, I think we'll, you know, that will be meshed out separately. Obviously, I think the fact that, you know, um, how you see, you know, this working in terms of from start to finish. Um, making sure that you're following the recommendations, obviously, of the traffic engineer. Sure. So I think this is, a, a, like it, Ms. Hines said, a, a perfect example of how a petition came in. We heard it. We sought um, you know, advice from a professional third party. And now we're taking action to make that happen. Uh, these safety uh, changes to this traffic area, this, this neighborhood, um, are much needed. I think it needed to be addressed. And I think we are addressing it. Uh, the plan is to advertise the new traffic pattern via those electronic sign boards. Uh, the highway department, uh, DPW has some, uh, traffic advisory has some. So 
when it comes down to changing pattern and changing behavior of drivers, first we want to educate, let them know that this is coming. Um, as it's progressing, we'll update the community on how the changes are going to be made. Uh, and then we'll continue to educate uh, in combination with enforcement. Uh, we can't just stick signs up and expect people to, to you know, the next day to acknowledge that this, this traffic pattern has changed. So over the next several weeks, and we're hoping that it's a good time because you know, before school gets into place at the end of August, early September, uh, this is obviously a major intersection that's used uh, by many members of the community, whether they're going to or from school. Um, so that new change and that new traffic pattern will be in place by then, uh, and we're hoping that that's going to make a significant uh, safety uh, improvement. Great. And I would just reiterate on, on any of these, um, you know, talking about these and the impact that we're in, intending to have, um, but I would just, you know, express my thanks, obviously, to both the police department uh, and public works, who, who are the ones, you know, implementing this, making sure that uh, they're implemented correctly. Um, and sometimes, you know, we do learn as we go on some of these, and we have to adjust our, our approach, um, and all of that impacts the way that we, uh, you know, approach the next uh, safety concern. But uh, overall, I think everything the chief just went through on, on the implementation of Highland Street, uh, additionally, the, you know, the heavy commercial vehicle exclusions, the changes uh, of Section 17C, all of those um, put a significant amount of work on public uh, works and public safety. Uh, and I would just like to say thank you, obviously, for all the hard work that they've done. So to what the original question was, um, I think that was a long way to get in here, but I think it's important for people to understand why uh, changes might be coming and, and wh what those might I impact. Obviously, a lot of significant work has been done in the, in the last two and a half years. So where we are right now um, is that the TAC has made a recommendation to the select board. Uh, and Ms. Hine, if you'd like to just cover what that is um, yeah. and, and uh, how you see that happening. In the best of our wisdom two and a half years ago, nine members felt appropriate. Um, nine members is a large group. Reaching a quorum is difficult. TAC experienced that time and time again, and it was a clear and obvious recommend, um, suggestion to go from nine to five. So that's the change number one, is to reduce the size to a much more manageable size for the frequency at which the meetings um, happen and for the work that they do. So five members instead of nine. Um, we did not lose the resident component, so you'll see that the new membership has two residents. We definitely need the planning, engineering side of things. We need that um, professional um, experience in the conversation. Right now the town does not have an engineer on staff. Um, that's a missing piece to the Traffic Advisory Committee, so the goal would be to seek a resident who's interested in joining the committee who has that kind of engineering or planning background. And then the second resident being one at large. Um, some, we have a lot of people who are passionate about traffic in halls, and I don't think we'll have any trouble filling those two spots. And as I mentioned earlier, having the, the public safety and the Department of Public Works present in the room for the conversations. Is, is key, it's critical. So fire stays with a designated um, member, uh, police stays with a designated member, and DPW stays. So we now have a five-member committee. Okay. And so uh, the public I, safety... I one. Whoops. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. So the way that... Uh, school as well. Right, exactly. <laughs> I was like, I'm missing somebody so, in this. Um, I think for the most part where we're set up right now is that th this is ready to see three of five. We are going to be looking for those two um, uh, residents to, to represent those seats. Uh, obviously, residents who have been on the original iteration of TAC um, you know, may be considered for continuity. That would be excellent. Obviously, they did a, they did a wonderful job. The engineering component is going to be the, the most difficult recruitment here, but I think that on that point that you've made, there's a couple things that we're looking at uh, as a community here in terms of, you know, are, are there changes that we should make as we uh, see the challenges that are facing the town as we uh, go into the future? Engineering is one of those. And so, as we discussed with two of the initiatives that have been uh, taken up by TAC and the community in the last two and a half years, they, they require us to engage engineering services, right? And so we have looked at, I know I've had some discussions with finance committee members on, you know, how much the town pays for outsourced engineering. Does it make sense potentially in the future to discuss in-house engineering services? I think that's a conversation we'll continue to have. Uh, another thing on here that the public safety representative um, most likely is going to be the traffic uh, safety officer. Uh, and then that individual can obviously uh, use uh, our fire mm -hmm. um, uh, professionals as uh, as a resource uh, if there's anything you know generally speaking the, the fire is always concerned about making sure large apparatus can can get through uh, tight areas um, 
but so that those sort of things play out and yet obviously the the traffic safety engineer chief if you just want to take a second to, to also touch on where you are um, that the evolution of that position and where you see that going in the future. Sure, so the traffic safety officer was created about two years ago um, to address a lot of these concerns that were brought in through TAC. And a lot of it is not just enforcement. Again, we go back to education. So deploying these signs and having somebody that can attend community meetings and, and the idea was eventually to transition uh, the traffic safety officer over to TAC to be part of that, to be part of that conversation. Um, officer Grace right now uh, works Monday through Friday on the evening shift, I think, with the uh, number of increases of uh, traffic complaints and traffic issues and, and so forth. I think that the police department is going to be looking to you know, add a second traffic safety officer, uh, one during the daytime and during the evening time, so that the two uh, traffic safety officers can work in conjunction with TAC to address some of the issues as they come up. Um, and I think, I think we've set a good foundation for that. I think there's room to grow for sure, just like anything. Uh, but I think having that designated traffic safety officer with his own traffic safety cruiser, the equipment, the, number, uh, the amount of training he's been able to go to, um, I think is a significant increase in our ability to address some of these issues. Okay. And we have discussed obviously as well for anybody um, at the previous town meeting the, the potential need that that would put on, on the department to increase staffing and, and those types of things and those conversations will continue to uh, percolate as, as the engineer conversation will as well. And so I'll just end that with uh, getting back to the original question of, of how will these changes impact um, you know future traffic changes. I think at some point uh, as Ms. Hine mentioned, nine was a large group. Uh, as the chief mentioned, COVID impacted the way that, that the group could get together, hear these petitions, and progress through them. At the same time, we need to have uh, resident impact on this group. And so a five-member uh, group will be reorganized. We are looking for the resident uh, residents to be finalized um, before this group meets again. And in, in terms of how a resident who is concerned about uh, a traffic safety issue or speed on their street, how they should engage with TAC, that is unchanged, right? They should still be using the petition form, mm -hmm. um, but they will just see a different process uh, on the other end. Yeah, we're hoping in combination of the smaller group and with in-person meetings that they can get through the existing list and kind of go through some of those and address some of those petitions as well as take on others. I think it's important that the TAC stick to a quarterly meeting basis. I think it is a big commitment. Uh, it was, certainly was a big commitment over the last three years, uh, but I'm certainly not going anywhere. So the traffic safety officer, I'll help with that transition over there as the former chair, um, but help him to kind of Show the, show the way the process works, how the petitions are heard and so forth. And like Ms. Hines said, I think we set a very good foundation on how those uh, were addressed and how we kind of took those in and grouped them in. Um, if COVID wasn't an issue, I'm sure we probably could have got through a lot more of that list, but I think we did a good job with what we had at the time. And like I said, I'm certainly uh, willing and able to help uh, the traffic safety officer transition to this new, to this new group and, and work through the list as we have. Great. And in time, as, as our Vision Zero efforts advance and Complete Streets advances and Safe Routes to School advances, some of these petitions will, will not exist anymore. Um, and so we're making progress in areas outside of the Traffic Advisory Committee's work that will directly impact the Traffic Advisory Committee's work. Um, so I have a lot of optimism that we're moving in a direction, no pun intended, <laughs> that will significantly improve um, the level of comfort that residents feel and the safety that they feel in, the, in their community as they access it, either by car, by bike, um, or on foot. Great. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you to my guests, Select Board Member Tina Hine and Police Chief Matthew Stone for being with me today. And thank you for watching Ask the TA on HCAT. We hope you found it informative. If you have a question that you would like answered in a future segment, please email us at the address on the screen below. Thank you.